Hello, Captains, and welcome to my third Star Trek Online news update video. This is the final one that I am making right now until more new news comes in Star Trek Online. But in the first video, I covered the roadmap for Star Trek Online 2018 and 19. That was cool. In the second one, we talked about Q's Winter Wonderland and the Fakiri Store Warship you're getting. And now in this third one, I'm just going to look around and cover other things that I missed. Uh, there were a couple of uh, new things here, but really not a lot of information. There's a lot of talk about sales. You know, there was a Black Friday sale apparently, but you know, locks, lockbox sales and key sales and uh, subscription sales and uh, you know, R&D box openings where you can get some unique ships and that type of thing. All that kind of stuff. I don't want to hark on too much. Uh, just letting you know, you know, that stuff it has existed for the past couple of months here. They've been doing a lot of like, you know, promotions and sales trying to get you to, to buy some of these uh, things in the game. So there's been a lot of news updates related to that. I'm not going to talk a lot about that stuff. I just want to get to the meat and heart of uh, the new stuff so i was just scrolling down here here's the at the beginning of uh, october news uh, and just want to go over some things that i might have missed since then there's been these um story line things that they've been talking about here that uh, i haven't really uh read or caught up on and uh what the heck Er, Ark Games. Why are you throwing chip? Let's try that again. Please work. Thank you. Welcome to 2409. This is kind of like uh, a really cool story thing. If you read this entire thing, which I'm not going to do here because it's very long as you can see. But, you know, in the Age of Discovery, how you are thrust into the future in 2409, even in the TOS faction, you're thrust into the future. Um, this is kind of a cool thing. It's like it tells you if you were, you know, one of those people, what you need to do and how to behave and who you need to contact and that sort of thing to, um, to help you now that you are in the future. Like before reading the following missive, please understand that knowledge of its contents is closely monitored and highly classified. If you are found, you know, it's cool. They, 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 they write this from a perspective that this was really you traveling into the future. And, you know, you're, you're going to be watched by the temporal people. Uh, it's like temporal displacement and you. I love the title like that. Temporal displacement and you. We understand that finding yourself removed from your native time stream can be a difficult situation for any operative to adapt to. Regardless of your training or talents, the following guide is meant to aid you in adjusting to your new temporal reality and to put you on the path to success and well-being. I, I just love that. I love stuff like that. So this just kind of goes over like, you know, who you need to contact, crew identities and support structures. Tells you all about what's happening here in the future. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but man, if you do, it's really cool the way they write this. Your primary contacts, Temporal Agent Philip Cray for the United Federation of Planets, Lieutenant Khan for the House of Nogra, Klingon Defense Force, Subcommander Kale is the uh, Romulan Republic, New Romulus Taldewa, TDO Counseling, they got counseling people here you can talk to, that's cool. I don't even know what to do, uh, you know, you talk about identities and all that kind of stuff and time is on our side. Um, Ah, my mouse died. If it's not the internet not loading a page, now it's my my mouse battery dying. I got a cable I can plug in, but oh, I got it <laughs> right in the middle of that. Um, on reintegration, reintegrating, you know, into the time stream and that sort of thing. Just a cool story, you know. Doesn't really affect anything, but it's just like cool background stories. So I like things like that. So there's been a few of those. Um, Age of Discovery wallpapers are available now. There's some good wallpapers. Um, I read this about help remastering Deep Space Nine. Um, it's, I think it's about the actual TV show. They're trying to get a Kickstarter thing going to like remaster what we left behind episode or something. 
Um, you can read about that. Uh, Tholian Red Alert. This was way back in October, so I'm not even going to read that because that is already done and over. Upgrade Weekend, again, done and over. That was back in October. Uh, another one of those stories of different stars in our latest fiction blog, a Starfleet officer flung far into the future encounters someone he never expected. So another good story to read of different stars. Kind of gives just good background on what's going on and everything. Kind of cool. Let's see what else we got. Um, more patch notes. Heart and Minds, that was for Halloween. We're way past that now. 30% off discount packs, that kind of stuff. The Arena Stone Pack, it came back, but that was a long time ago now. The Featured TFO, of course, we're way into that. Uh, Phoenix Prize Packs, that was back in uh, early November. Uh, low buy stuff. Uh, another one of those stories called The Ascendant. This one might be worth reading. It's pretty good. Jula, now stuck in the 25th century, finds an unexpected ally in a very unexpected place in our latest fiction blog. So this one might be good. I haven't read it, but I would like to know who they're talking about here. Because remember, she's in the future as well with us because uh, the uh, Starbase 1 thing happened and flung her into the future as well. So that could be interesting. Oh, and you can't go home again. The battle to save time is a difficult one and leads to some difficult moral questions. New temporal agents learn this from Daniels himself in our latest fiction blog. I like that title. You can't go home again. You know, you're stuck here in the future. He's wearing a Discovery uniform. Look how sad he is. So I kind of like the stories like that. Uh, PC patch notes. Double XP weekend. That was in uh, end of November. Black Friday. We're way past that. Q's Winter Wonderland. Just did a video on that. The Fakiri Ship. Did the video on that. Uh, here we go, beginning of December, so now this is current. Open R&D boxes for the next few weeks, and you can earn a ship of your choice, including the brand new Vaudoir Juggernaut. So, a Vaudoir Juggernaut ship in an R&D box. And these are the ships, I guess, that you could get in one of those R&D boxes. Uh, I'm not lucky enough to get all that stuff. But there it is, the Vaudoir Miracle Worker jug Juggernaut Tier 6 ship. There's the details on the ship. I'm not going to read everything. It's got Commander Tactical. So, interesting. Again, it's only a chance to get it if you open those R&D boxes. Last chance for a lifetime subscription sale. Patch notes, research and development. 20% right, research. 20% research and development uh, discount, research and development weekend, last chance at the swarm lockbox this week is your last chance to grab this technology of the Herc so don't miss it, that was on December 7th, was the swarm lockbox to get your Herc, get your Herc on. This is interesting, I don't know what this is all about, it says, welcome to the tardigrade Adoption Agency. What? Welcome to the Federation's Tardigrade Adoption Agency. Through your support, we're able to rescue these magnificent animals from a variety of situations and help them find their place in the cosmos. Take the test below and we'll match you with one of our five tardigrades based on your responses. We will be sure to send, your, send you occasional updates on how they are doing. Who knows, you may find a new pen pal for life or a new friend to accompany you on your adventures. Then again, <clears throat> thank you so much. Excuse me. Thank you so much for your support. Um, where are the options? <laughs> Did it not load correctly? There they are. Which tardigrades should you adopt? Which ship would you rather captain? Where should you go on a holodeck? Hey, lay in a course warp. Choose first officer. Okay, this is kind of a cool test. Tell you what, guys. I'm going to do this test. And I'm going to do this at the end of the video. Let's go through the other news bits first. I'm going to do this test and see what my results are. I want you guys to post your results below in the comments. But I'm going to do this. 
for me. I'll put a timestamp on here to let you know when I start this test in the video. But let's finish the other news real quick. The Mirror Eagle Carrier leads. The Infinity Locks box is returning and bringing with it a brand new starship, the Mirror Escort Carrier, based on a dark, twisted version of Discovery's Eagle class. Ooh. The Infinity Locks box contains prizes from nearly all previously retired lock boxes will be, will be available again for an appearance beginning on December 13th, so that's tomorrow, and on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 on January 7th. During this time, enemies defeated on both ground and space maps will have a small chance of dropping one of these prize-filled packages while the Swarm lockbox will be retired. For the first time ever, this run of the Infinity Lockbox will introduce a chance at receiving a brand new starship never before seen in Star Trek Online. Ooh. Okay, so along with the new uh, starship and all the prizes previously offered, uh, additional prizes seen in the DS9 lockbox have been added to the drop tables. So we've got a Jim Hadar Light Battlecruiser Tier 6 Cross Faction Consoles, DS9 themed ground traits, DS9 themed space traits, DS9 Universal Kit Modules, Gamma Quadrant Research Assignments, DS9 Bridge Officers, Varanganar Plasma Weapons. And then this, an all-new level scaling mirror escort carrier. Mirror escort carrier. Wow. The mirror escort carrier tier six is an all-new starship being added to the Infinity Lock box as a as a choice players select upon opening in any Infinity Prize Pack. This new starship can be used as soon as you've completed the tutorial and will scale with you all the way up to level 65. So this is a scaling up to level 65 ship, much better than that Walker one, Walker class one, which only went up to 30. We are very excited to be trying out something new and experimental, building on the success and reception we received from the Walker class prototype. Um, we hope you share in our excitement, blah, blah, blah. If commissioned at a low level, some of the ship's capabilities will temporarily be restricted, but will quickly and automatically unlock as you increase your captain's level. At each tier, this ship remains a strong competitor to other ships of the same tier, and outdoing them in many ways, and keeps getting better as you continue to play Star Trek Online. The table below shows you the progression of hull strength weapon slots and console slots. So this ship, unlike the Walker prototype, does restrict you on things at lower levels, it sounds like, but as you increase in level, those things start unlocking on the ship. So it is literally and very finally a scaling starship in every in every meaning so the hull strength increases all the way to 65 the four weapons look they start at three and then it goes to four at 20 and then that opens up to five at level 30 the aft weapons is only one at level one two at level 10 and it stays two throughout the whole thing uh, experimental weapon slots is only one of those. Tactical consoles, those also are scaling. Three, and then four, and then five. And then engineering consoles, one, and then two. And then science consoles, one, and two, and three, and four. That is really cool how different parts of it start unlocking at higher tiers. I like this idea of a scaling starship, and I think that might be the best way to go. Because they've had this whole mess of, you know, tiers tiered starships and then when tier six came out kind of threw everything through it through a monkey wrench and everything you know and um if they ever want to give us higher tiered ships it would be a problem again but by giving us a scaling ship that can scale with your level they can have ships that scale no matter how many levels they come out with they could keep raising the levels and the tier of your ship could increase and you wouldn't actually have to get a new tier ship. So imagine having like a tier six ship now that is scaling. And then when like tier seven esque or tier eight or tier nine ships come out, that ship would just level all the way up to that. And you wouldn't have to go get a new tier seven or new tier eight or new tier nine. It's a way to give us a ship without having to buy a new ship at every tier. I kind of like that. I like that idea that you could have a ship and, pl and, and start playing at level one with that ship 
and then as you level up, it levels with you, and you never have to get another ship. That way, you could like so you could say, "Oh, this is my favorite ship. This is the ship I want to use throughout my whole career," and you could actually end up doing that. I like this idea, and I like where that's headed, and I, I wonder why they've never done it before. But I hope they continue this. I'd say yes, this could be successful. And I would say to them, please continue this. Give me more scaling ships like this. I like that idea. I like the idea of starting out with a ship that scales with me. And so I don't have to keep purchasing new ships at every 10 levels. That's a cool idea. That's a very cool idea. Note that although Starship Mastery may be earned immediately, unlocking the Starship trait does not permit its use until level 50. And then there's a Mirror Escort Carrier Tier 6. Incidents with the alternate dimension known as the Mirror Universe have resulted in some Terran vessels being studied and retrofitted for service. The Ingle class Mirror Escort Carrier Tier 6 is retrofitted from a ship that crossed over from the 23rd century into present day space. A fearsome Terran vessel, the, the Starship's capabilities and integrated technologies emphasize the Terran philosophy. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So this is the scaling ship. Um, you got to complete the tutorial. That's fine. Four weapons, five. Aft weapons, two. 1.15 hull modifier. 1.125 shield modifier. Or 1.25. One commander tactical. One Lieutenant Engineering Intelligence, one Lieutenant Commander Science, one Ensign Universal, one Lieutenant Commander Universal slash Temporal. So you got a Temporal and an Intelligence. Five Tactical, two Engineering, four Science, 14 degrees per second, 10 plus 10 power to weapon, and Aux can load dual cannons. It's got one hangar bay, so you got a hangar bay here. Uh, escort Carrier Ability Package, it's an Escort Carrier. Admiralty card. It's got a cascading subatomic disruption. Activating this console int intensively damages local subatomic fields for a short duration. The, en the energy released from the process seeks out and significantly harms nearby power sources, usually starships, dealing significant electrical damage as it cascades outward. As the subatomic disruptions leap from target to target, they leave behind areas temporarily weakened at the micron scale, making these ships temporarily more vulnerable to incoming damage. Okay. It provides a passive boost to exotic damage and auxiliary power. You've got the superior, superior area denial starship trait. While this trait is slotted, activating beams, fire at will, or cannon scatter volley causes your weapons to debuff foes' armor resistance for a short duration, as well as activating fire at will 1 and cannon scatter volley 1 on your hangar pets. And then it's got mirror universe shuttlecraft as the hangar pets. How cool is that? They have omnidirectional phaser beams. This looks cool. Oh, and vanity picture shields. Yay for that again. Click the button below to see what the ship looks like with different shields on it. Ooh, I love this. I'm glad they're doing this. They need to keep doing this. There's the default. I like the default look on it, honestly. The default look is just cool enough already. I'm just kind of looking at the various ones here and see. They all make sense. But I like the way it looked by default anyway. But that gives you an idea what the different shields on it look like. The Terran one is just, ooh, I love that shield on it with the purple and the black on there. That is a nice looking, that is a nice looking texture there. The Zinkethi ain't bad either. But the default, I mean, that's good too. Cool. So, that is a cool starship that I would like to have, but it's in the Infinity Lockbox. So you gotta hope you get one of those. It's just, you know, luck of the draw, right? Okay, Tholian Red Alert Weekend. The Tholians are tightening their web on all platforms. Go to Red Alert. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to read the storyline. Join in as part of a strike force to defeat the Tholians in the Azure Nebula. It'll be available for captains on all platforms on all 15 up from December 13th until the 17th. Players will be directed to an alert when a Tholian fleet appears in sector space. Simply travel a Tholian ship and select a queue for the event. 
So no special reward for that, just another featured red alert. Because remember, they removed the red alerts. You cannot just randomly go into a red alert now. Now you have to wait until they do a red alert event weekend. So that's what this is, a red alert event weekend. And this one is the Tholian one. And it's also a bonus marks weekend on top of that. So I guess if you need a lot of marks, uh, December 13th to 17th, um, a 50% increase in uh, rewards in marks, fleet or reputation marks. So this is the weekend to get your marks on if you need them. And maybe get an infinity lockbox for that really cool ship that I want badly. Okay, I've been waiting now too long. Let's do this tartar grade thing. Which tartar grade should I adopt? I don't know which one fits me. Okay, I'm going to do this test. I'm going to pick the answers that suit me. Uh, I want you guys to also do this test. Go to StarTrekOnline.com. Do the test and put your answers below. Let's see what you all get in uh, this as well. I'm going to choose... Obviously a time ship. I got to have my 29th century or 31st century time ship. I'm all about the time ship. So heck yes, that's what I would captain. Where would you go on a holodeck? Ooh. Tell you what. I I'm in I'm in with Data and Jordy here, Moriarty, uh, Moriarty, Moriarty, Moriarty. I'm in with that. <laughs> I'm in with that. Helm, lay in a course. Warp 9. Nothing nothing less than Warp 9 will do. I'm sorry. Choose a first officer. Dang, this one's difficult. Choose a first officer. Not Quark. Not the Borg. It's either Tilly or Q. I'm going with Q. Wouldn't you have a Q on your side if you could? What are you making in the replicator? Oh yeah, for sure the steak. Absolutely. You sit in your captain's chair and say, I say hit it. Uh, brakes, where are the brakes? I said, no, <laughs> I don't know. I say, uh, go. <laughs> uh, let me think about this for a second. I'm sitting in my time ship, warp nine. Uh, yeah. I'd say, uh, go. I'd just say go. I'd say go. That's what I'd say. What's your favorite star color? Gonna give it to this one. I love that neon ultraviolet, that, that, that gradient that's between purple and blue, that ultraviolet kind of color. So I'm going with that. That's a very cool color to me. Which Gorn pun is the best? Uh, Gorn with the wind. Gosh, that one we've heard a bajillion times. Gorn in 60 seconds. Since you've been Gorn, where have all the flowers Gorn? Gorn girl. It's Gorn with the wind. That's the, that's the one you just start with, right? Rock, paper, scissors, lizard, or Spock? Always Spock. Why did you go to space? To find something new. To find someone new to make my mark because it's there because I can't stay here <laughs> uh, I went to space mm, because it's there it's there Oh, I have to enter my email address. By participating in this quiz, you are electing to receive email messages pertaining to this event for a limited time. Okay, fine. Ah, you got a Smarty Tardigrade. Smarty lives up to her name in every aspect. She's not just our smartest Tardigrade. She might even be the smartest being here. We'll send your first update on how she's doing soon. Well, I guess I look forward to seeing what that update is all about. So, there you go. I got the Smarty Tardigrade. Post below what you got. I'm interested. Uh, that's kind of cool. And I guess I'll be checking my emails to see updates on my Tardigrade. Uh, if there's anything interesting in there, I'll let you know. But... Okie dokie, I guess that's that. That's a thing. 
<laughs> That's a thing. The smarty tardigrade. I could use that as a thumbnail or something. I don't know. Okay. Well, that's all the Star Trek news that I got for right now. That brings us up to date on December 12th. And anything new that comes along, I will surely post it. But for now, enjoy your game. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Check out my new updated Patreon page. You can subscribe to Patreon to support this channel. I now have Patreon-only Discord access. It's a way to chat with others and myself about any topic.